Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars, and I have for you today episode 4.6 of the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. Episode 4.6 is entitled God of This World Who Can Blind the Minds of Men. This quality of Satan is described in 2 Corinthians 4, King James Version, Public Domain, verses 1 to 4, and they go like this. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Here's my comment. These verses speak of Christ's disciples who have a ministry of spreading his teachings and have received the mercy from him and can be courageous because of that. It says that the ministers of Christ are completely honest and open and speak the truth. It says that for those from whom Christ's gospel and the good news of Christ is hidden, it is hidden, the disciples should understand, because those people are lost. In those people, he says, the God of this world, whom we take to be Satan, has blinded their minds so that Christ's gospel cannot shine upon them. Now, this is a reference to a particular time, a time when the disciples were spreading the word of Christ's gospel and when other people were blinded to the truth of that word. Do you see? This reference to a particular time in relation to Christ consciousness, it seems to me, implies that Satan's power has to do with the third dimension only, the realm of time and space, the physical realm. Since that dimension is built on the illusion of time and space, rather than in the eternal now, rather than in the state of Christ consciousness, of awareness, of awakening to new life on new earth. When the Bible speaks of Satan as the prince of this world, I am guessing it means he is the prince of planet earth only. So we have there a physical restriction with regard to Satan and a temporal restriction mentioned as the time when the gospel was being spread, the early days of the gospel of Christ. Beyond that, we have an eternal awareness of the presence of Christ consciousness everywhere. But in that realm of Christ consciousness awareness, there is no satanic presence, none at all. Satan cannot exist in the higher realms, in the heaven worlds. 
in the fifth dimension and higher. So the verse speaks of Satan as the god of this world who can blind the minds of men, but he can only do so in a third and fourth dimensional context. By adhering to Christ consciousness, we rise above this and above the powers of Satan and above his snares. But within those two realms, the third and the fourth dimension, the physical realm and the astral realm, Satan, I feel, does have the power of mind control over humankind. For more on that, you can go to my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com and search for the blog category, Mind Control. I have a pretty good image for you today. It's very striking. And it's called The Worship of Mammon by Evelyn de Morgan, circa 1909. It's in Wikimedia Commons, so I can show it to you. And it has to do with being blinded by the desire for wealth. It looks like this. Here is a woman seems to be blind to everything else but her petition of this massive presence for money. She wants money. She's not thinking about anything else. She's absolutely miserable because she doesn't have money. Okay. So, this is called Mammon here, the personification of lust for money and power. And the comment goes like this, Mammon, the personification of lust for money and power, is sometimes termed a demon that is the son of Satan, and sometimes Beelzebub. I aver that mammon rules this world. Thus, in a roundabout way, I thought to use this image to illustrate the biblical thought that Satan is called the god of this world who can blind the minds of men. But in the case of this painting, it is desire for lucre or money that captivates the mind of a woman. Here she is on the top of a mountain with the beautiful scenery of starry sky and mountain tops beneath her, but she's not looking at the beautiful view of the physical creation here on Earth. She's instead has her eyes fixed, transfixed, on this, this, this being here, which seems cold-hearted to me, unkind, cold-hearted, and not that willing to grant her a favor. So if she were able to shake her mind free of the notion that she has to have money and power, she would be able to enjoy the beautiful panorama of earthly life. Do you know what I mean? It's better to, to take what God gives us and make the best of it than to go looking for things that, that He prefers not to give us. We need to ask Him what He wants for us. That's what I feel. And in that way, we'll always be happy because He'll always be unfolding the great wealth of our earthly experience before our eyes. Um, that's not to say that we ought not stand up for ourselves. Of course we ought in this world of duality. Of course we ought to stand up for ourselves, but we can stand up for ourselves without becoming involved in turbulence of the heart and mind. Do you know we can, with a peaceful mind, we can sally forth, foray forth through the scenes of this earthly life. <laughs> well, that's all for, for now, dear ones. 
God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days. <laughs>